In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, I created a really cool taxidermy display, and I want to show you how I made it so you can make your own too. Before we get into this, I just want to say that the way we're going to do this, it may not be the way that is a traditional scientific approach, right? We're trying to create something that is very engaging for people. We want something lifelike as if you took it right out of nature, right? So that's why I call it taxidermy because that's the closest thing to it, right? We're not stuffing this thing like a dead deer and trying to put it on a wall, but we're going to keep the entire thing intact and put it into a lifelike pose. So in order to do this, you're gonna need a few different supplies. The first thing you're gonna need is some specimens. You could catch those yourself or you could purchase some online. The ones that I used, I purchased on Etsy um, from some different vendors and they came to me dried and I had to rehydrate them, which we'll talk about that in a minute. But pick something that you really like. I would recommend working with beetles because they have very thick exoskeletons compared to some other soft bodied insects. So obviously this is only going to work with things that have very durable, heavy exoskeletons. After you get your specimens, you're going to need to purchase a display case, something you can show them off out of. You want something that can be either sealed airtight or keep other things out of it, right? So the one that I chose is this football display case. And I got this at the container store, but you can purchase these at other places like Hobby Lobby or even like a big box store. You're also going to need some glue in order to get the insects to stick down and uh, be adhered. The type of glue that I used is one called Yuhu. It's a German glue and it was recommended to me by Catherine, who is one of the sponsors of our video today. So that's what I used, but there's other super glues you could use as well that should work totally fine for you. You're also going to want some insect pins, some stainless steel ones that are not going to corrode over time. So that's what I used and we're going to use those to help hold up parts and also to skewer the insect. You're also going to want different things for the display. To me, I really like having some height to the display, not having it just be a flat display to me, I think looks a lot better. So I got some clay, I got some wood. Um, my brother helped me with some other materials to make it look like an awesome actual uh, landscape too, right? Fake plants, you could get fake mushrooms, fake moss, things like that are going to just make this thing really pop, which is what we want. So the first thing you're going to do is after you gather up all your supplies is you're going to trim the edges of your wood. You want to get that wood or the other pieces of your display to fit into the case. So for me, I got my wood, I trimmed off some of the edges, I got it situated the way I wanted, I got some clay to kind of add some height to it, add some depth to my display, I kind of molded it around so it would all fit within the display case and I could still shut it. If you're gonna use wood like me, you wanna make sure that that and the clay all are glued together really well, that everything's kind of stuck together so you've got a firm base for everything so nothing's gonna shift around, right? You want a little bit of weight to it so it's gonna all hold together really good. After you get your clay all molded the way you want, you wanna get that to harden out based on whatever type of clay you get. Make sure that hardens up. If there's any cracks in it, you patch those up, which I had to do a couple times. After that, you've got to rehydrate your specimens, which could take a few days, right? If you want to learn how to hydrate specimens, you can check out this video right here, which will describe to you how to do that. After your specimens are rehydrated, you are going to dry fit them. So you're going to put them onto the wood, get them into the spots you want, make sure everything's going to fit. You can just kind of try out different positions and setups to see how you want the insects to be when you're finally done. If you wanted to, you could mark the spots where they're going to go, but for me, I kind of had an idea in my head, so it wasn't that big of a deal. After this, we're going to attach the specimens to the wood. So the main way to do this is to attach the main body to the wood. There's multiple ways you can do this. You could use the glue and just glue them straight onto it, but that doesn't look as natural to me. So what I did is I took the pins, I firmly pressed them into the wood, multiple pins per each one. So I would put that into the wood and then I cut the pin so that I can skewer them onto the pin. You wanna make sure you don't have too much length because you don't want the skewer to come out of the top of them, right? So if this is my beetle, I want the skewer to go into the bottom of it but not come out the top because if it comes out the top, it's gonna look weird, right? So you just get enough height on there so that it's kind of lifted up just a little bit above the actual base of the wood and then it will hold it up in its place. The next thing you'll do is after they are fully attached to the wood, you're gonna get the tips of the legs into the positions you want. So 
you get those tips, you're gonna glue those down and you'll use pins to kind of hold the legs up into the position you want. I would recommend doing this again to get the legs in the position you want first. So start with the start with the first leg segment, which I believe is the femur, and then get that into the position you want, right? If you, you're gonna lift those up a little bit and then move the next legs into the position you want, but use those pins, you know, cross those pins across each other to get them into the positions you want, lift it up, get it into whatever position you want. All these are gonna be taken off in the end, but you do wanna make sure that the tips of those legs or anything that's resting on the wood gets glued down really good. So you could literally dip them into the glue or you can add a little bit of glue onto the wood and then put them onto that. So you get everything in place with pins to hold it into the position. You're gonna also glue the tips of the legs called the tarsi. Um, after that, you can also use the pins to modify the mouth, have the mouth open, have the antennae in a position. Everything's just gonna wanna droop, right? So if you have antennae, they're just gonna kind of go down. You want those to be held up in an awesome position, looks more natural, spread out, as if they're moving around, uh, looking for food or living out their lives, right? So after you get everything set up, you've got everything exactly how you want it when it's going to be dried, you're gonna leave it alone and let it dry for a couple weeks. You wanna get it in a place that's nice and dry, Make sure and put the lid back on the case so that you know other insects aren't getting into it and trying to feed on the decaying material that may be remaining in their bodies. But keep them really dry. After they've dried for a couple weeks, you can pull out all the pins. So make sure and pull out all the pins and make sure nothing is moving. If, uh, if something moves or breaks, then you may have to repair it with glue, which I didn't have to do because I was just very careful because I didn't want to have to do that. So. With that, after I've pulled out all these pins, it's time for the final touches, which to some people is the most fun part. I'm not that artistic, so I handed this off to my brother, gave it to him, and he went and put in all the final touches by taking this and making it look much more like a landscape. So this is what the final display case looks like. So my brother helped me put this together, and I think he did really great. We wanted to add some personality to it, some texture, to make it look really cool. And I think he did an amazing job with this. One other thing I wanted to mention to you is that uh, I did also glue this in. So after I put it on the display case, I glued this all down so that it would stay in place. And my brother did end up painting the entire bottom to really make it pop as well, which helped out a lot with that too. Um, I did print out some small labels to label the species that are on here. I thought that's a nice touch as well to kind of increase the value of the scientific education but this is four years old so i've had this for four years and it should last you know many more years to come the only upkeep i would have if you don't seal it up and you start to see dermestid beetles in there so you'll see um, like shed skins from beetles that are trying to feed on the dead bodies if you ever see that then you want to put this in the freezer freeze it for a couple days and then pull it out so if you wanted some maintenance you might want to freeze this for a couple days um, once every year or two but other than that this thing is ready to go to display obviously you want to be very gentle with it and uh, it's very fragile I think it's very rewarding and it was very fun for me to make this but it really was time-consuming so it is a lot of work but if you're a creative person and you want to make something that's very custom that is going to be exactly as you want it I'd highly recommend you make your own because it wasn't that difficult it's just very time-consuming figuring it out if putting in 15 to 20 hours doesn't sound like fun to you, you could purchase your own. So our sponsor today is Insect Expressions and this is a display case that uh, Catherine from there sent me. And I really like this a lot. She put my favorite insect there on top. It's probably a little bit too big for this display case. Uh, if it was me doing it, I probably would have made it a little bigger because that goliath beetle is so big. Um, but she did a really good job of adding textures. You can see she's used like some wood chips. And even, it's almost just like you just go outside and gather debris outside, right? Some dirt, some little bit of wood chips or pine needles, whatever you can find. And then I really like, you can see this cool little weevil which is kind of trying to climb up. And the weevil is just beautiful to me. I really love weevils, especially this one with these bright uh, vibrant color so that's a nice touch on it too most people don't actually see this but there's actually a butterfly here that mimics uh, a leaf so i thought that was a beautiful cool touch and uh, i thought it was a great piece so i'm very excited that i have it if you want to learn more about Catherine's work and you want to look at 
the potential of purchasing one, you can go to insectexpressions.com. I highly recommend you reach out to her if this is something you would like to get. She's got some other pieces on there that I think are even better than this one that just look amazing. If you guys are interested in joining our community and being involved with conversations about insects, collecting, raising them, you can join our Discord, which is free. You can do that by sending an email to the one shown here, theinsecthunter at gmail.com, and then I will send you an invite so you can join our channel and all the conversations we're having. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure and hit the like button, subscribe and click that bell so that you can be notified the next time we make a video, which hopefully will be less than one year from now.